Test, test. Test, testing, testing, test one, two, three. Thank you. 
Good morning. Welcome to worship. I just cut my uh, thumb on the cymbals, so we threw the cymbals away. But we have percussion instruments for everybody else. So if you didn't get any on the way in, you know, we're into joyful noises here. We love to have you um, get into the music. So um, we'll, play, we'll play some joyful noise instruments uh, as we sing. So if the instrument you have is your hands, you can use them to clap. Or you can snap your fingers if you're good at that. Or you can just raise your voices really well. Okay? So, next week is the week before Lent begins. And we will do Lent. We will do Lent. It's six weeks long. Bruce Ingerbritsen and I used to tease each other that um, Advent should be six weeks because we could use a little more preparation time for Christmas. And Lent should be four weeks because we're really looking forward to Easter. But it doesn't work that way. So we'll do, we'll do it the regular way. Um, so you can join us for that on Wednesday nights. But as we begin our worship this morning, we invite you. Look at that. David's handing out things. No, no, he's not. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Sometimes technology doesn't work the way we want it to. All right. Well, let's rise and um, sing together as we uh, begin. The opening hymn is Come All You People. We're glad you're all here. Thank you for being here. Join me in the prayer of the day as written in our bulletins. Yeah, we'll stay standing. Had to, had to think that through. Okay. Holy God, you invite us into your way of compassion, forgiveness, and peace. Lead us to love all our human kin and honor all of creation in ways that are life-giving. May we mend with mercy all that needs healing. Amen. You may be seated for the next hymn. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Judy. Good morning. The, the, the Holy Gospel is what I usually say, but the reading for today. So we have the Revised Common Lectionary. It gives us a gospel. It gives us an Old Testament story, a psalm, and another New Testament outside of the gospels. And we get to pick from those every single weekend. And if you read the gospel for today, you'd know why I chose this. Um, but I'm reading Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous and the Lord your God shall bless the land in which you are entering to possess. 
But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall certainly perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Here ends the reading. Grace and peace to you from the triune God who has created us, redeemed us, and continues at each and every moment to sustain us in our lives of faith. Amen. Wow. The, the Matthew text for today talked about divorce. We've talked about divorce enough in the church and the hardship of divorce. So we decided we were going to talk about choose life because this is what we're invited to do. And this pre-settles all of this. And always we want to choose life. So those of you who live with all of these things, you are loved. You are loved for who you are as you are, no matter what, right this minute. So something um, important happened this week in the land of the sports world. LeBron James be became the NBA player to score the most points. How many of you watched that game? Okay, I love that, I love that. How many of you know this though? All right, okay. So, so Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was the one who held the record before him. Now, Kareem played for the L.A. Lakers, and who does LeBron play for? The L.A. Lakers. Okay. So in this hype that's going on right before this is going to happen, you know, because they see it coming, they see it coming, and they know it's going to happen at some game soon, and they were pretty sure it was going to be at Tuesday night's game. So they keep asking Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who held the record for the most points scored prior to that, 39 years he held the record, uh, they ask him, what are you going to feel like when the record's broken? Well, what are you going to feel like? And he said, I've been telling people. It's like this. If I won the lottery 39 years ago and I got a billion dollars, and now somebody else is going to win the lottery 39 years later and they're going to get two billion dollars, I'm happy that I won and I'm happy that they won. It's like that. I'm happy for other people's gifts. I'm happy for other people's joy. If we don't live like that, we live with the idea that there's scarcity rather than abundance. Live with the idea that there's scarcity rather than abundance. That, is, that led me to the Walter Brueggemann quote that I love. And he says, the power of the future, Walter Brueggemann is not a basketball star by any means. He is an Old Testament scholar. And he says, the power of the future lies not in the hands of those who believe in scarcity, but of those who trust God's abundance. And today's text tells us to choose life so that you and your descendants may live. So what does that mean? What does that mean for us today in the world we live in today? Well, on January 31st, the sun started to shine and it's been shining more regularly uh, than it was in early part of January. And that's one way I would say, let's choose light and choose life, right? That just helps everything. But on that day, I, I was paying attention to it because I was at the Wisconsin Council of Churches, uh, Dane County Faith-Based Housing Summit. And so they were talking there about housing in Dane County and churches in Dane County and how we can work together to make a difference in the housing crisis that lives not just in Dane County, but across our country. And they were saying that, um, there's, there's some things that are going on in our county. For example, a one-bedroom apartment on average in Dane County costs $1,430 a month. A two-bedroom in Dane County, to rent a two-bedroom in Dane County, costs on average $1,700 a month. This just continues to rise. They said the cost to build a two-bedroom, one-bathroom, 1,000-square-foot house Think about that for just a minute. Two bedroom, one bathroom, a thousand square foot house. This is a small house. 
cost $300,000 to build right now. Housing is expensive and it's growing unaffordable for a lot of people. So Kurt Paulson, who's a professor at, at the U University of Wisconsin, was there and he was giving some statistics about this. And he said, where is affordable housing in Dane County? It's a trick question. It's in the county surrounding Dane County. And they're quickly becoming unaffordable housing as well. And people are having to have transportation then to drive to their jobs in Dane County. So there's a lot of complications that come with all this. But the point they were making is housing is in a crisis. And how can churches help? Well, you're going, well, you can't tap us to be your resource because, you know, churches aren't doing that great either post-pandemic. Across the country, churches are having struggles. But then they had another pastor talk. He uh, leads, his, Pastor Mark, he leads the press house down on the university campus. They had gotten to the point where they had no students at the press house at the university campus. And so they turned it into sober living. And now they're full. They have everything they need. So they're providing a sober living community for university students. Wonderful. And he said, we have to adjust our missions. We have to choose life. We can't get so bogged down with who we've been and what we've done in the past to not say choose life. Let's choose life. And so he was telling that there's a project going on in San Antonio, Texas, uh, and it started there, that um, of the churches that will be closing oh, because of uh, lack of participation or the, the ability to sustain their ministries, in San Antonio, they were looking at the properties. And if those properties could be developed into affordable living places, they would solve the crisis. Then they started looking at the United States and they've looked at that 25% of churches will close by 2030. That's in the next seven years. We will have a reduction of 25% of Christian congregations in our nation in the next seven years. But they said, here's the thing, besides just dying, we could be resurrected in the sense that those 25% of the churches, if they were developed by a nonprofit developer into affordable housing, we would solve the housing crisis in our nation. He goes, we have one chance at this. We have one chance to do that. And for congregations that are thriving, which would be us, we would consider peace as a, a thriving place. And we're certainly working on that um, more and more. We're developing ideas. They said we can be partners in different kinds of things to be a part of this experience. We already have a team together. One member of our congregation who's here this morning, I see him in the back, had this idea and was talking about it at a dinner before Christmas that you've heard me talk about that before. So how do we think about who God is calling us to be? How do we choose life today? We continue to look for opportunities. We continue to look for possibilities. The average cost of ha to purchase a home in Dane County has topped $400,000. It has gone up on average $87,000 in the last three years, which means that most properties are, are, there's equity of $87,000. But how many people have gotten raises that have gone up that much in the last three years? Herein lies the problem. Dane County is really short of housing. Even though we overbuilt in 2006 to 2008, in the last 15 years we've underbuilt, and so much so that they think we're gonna need 75,000 units of housing in the next decade. 75,000. Do you see the building going up all over the place? I mean, I watch that and I'm going, who's renting these apartments? Well, that's why rent is so high because we can't sustain the growth of the Madison area. Who oh, no. knew? Did you know all this? Raise your hand if you knew all this. Yeah, okay, Mike knows this. He, he was in the lumber company. Okay, so how do we think about this, right? How do we begin to think about this and wrap our minds around this. Well, sometimes we look at individual stories. A couple of weeks ago, I announced that Doug had left worship because we had been helping a woman and her family who had lived at uh, the local hotel right next to Culver's 
during the pandemic because they opened that to homeless families. And they had been living there, but last fall they closed that down. So she had to find a different place to live. So she and her family were living in their car. They've been living in her car. She's got a full-time job, but she doesn't make enough to sustain housing. And so we had been helping them a little bit and she was sick and needed us to give her another week in the hotel uh, to, to, to get them going. So, but they don't take your credit card over the phone because they don't trust that they've gotten the credit card in an honest way. So Doug had to actually drive over to the hotel on the east side and, and sign off that we, to, we, we would allow, it was that in that really cold time, that we would allow this family to live in this hotel room for another week. It is not a fix by any means. It's a Band-Aid. It's barely a Band-Aid. But it's something. And so I announced that. And you know what you guys did? You filled our Hands Up Fund again. You gave us, I don't know, like $1,500 that went in the Hands Up Fund that week. It's awesome. We need to keep doing it because those problems continue to exist. But we need to solve the problems, right? We need to figure out how to choose life, how to choose life for one another. So another thing we're doing is we're looking into what can peace be? What can peace do? How do we invite people to learn about God and God's plan and God's hope and God's dream for our lives? This life that God invites us to choose with each other and for each other. How do we do that? And so at the last council meeting, and we've had the best council meetings, we've been brainstorming and thinking of ideas. And one idea we have is to do some art, to make art available as a part of faith formation. Because we know there are people who would never come in the door to come to worship as the first entree in the learning about who God is. That's just the way it is right now. But, but we can also think about how do we invite people to know God's love and God's grace and God's mercy and God's inclusion? How do we do that? Well, we need to be creative. We need to invite people in. We've gotten a lot of people to come uh, explore God and, and, and how, they, how we understand God in the world today because they've just tripped up upon some things as they brought their kids to the preschool here. They've learned about God in that way. And, and we've also talked about this art plan. So how can we do that? Well, there's a couple of ways we can do that. We can even make an art gallery here. We have walls, we have lots of wall space. Fellowship Hall is full of wall space. And so is the front, and the, the front entryway. And so we could make an art gallery where we can invite local artists to come in and we could use some of the, the sales of any art for streams of income. Now we have to explore that. We have to explore that and we have to understand the tax base and all those kinds of things. We don't have the answers yet. We're just exploring ideas. But oil and cold wax is how we did the art that's up here. Oil and cold wax is how Gina Hecht does the art that hangs here, uh, the beautiful stuff that hangs right now in the fireside room. So if you wanna look at it closely, go into the fireside room um, after church today. But Gina Hex art is layers. It's layers of oil and cold wax, oil paint and cold wax medium. It goes together and you can teach so many things about life and forgiveness through painting and layers. And so there's all kinds of ways that we can connect God's invitation to choose life with the community around us. Wednesday night, after Doug finished worship here, we hosted a group of people at our house for dinner and it included some people I was um, surprised by, but we, we, we were networking and we're talking about um, <clears throat> what we could do with art, what we could do with ministry, how we could deal with the affordable housing, how we can be the church in the world right now and choose life. I announced several weeks ago that I had had lunch with uh, the, the CEO of the Forward Service Corporation. And the Forward Service Corporation networks the agencies around that, that do um, the, the little bits of pieces people need when they're living in poverty to sustain their households. Like if you need a gallon of milk to feed your kids to, you know, have dinner tonight, you know, they'll help you find that. But you know what else they do? When you come in the door and you register with this agency, they ask you, what is your dream? What is your dream? And they said, always, it changes the look on a face. Somebody cares enough about my poverty to ask me what my dream is? Somebody cares about me, they see me as a human being? How cool is that? And then they help people figure out how to achieve their dream. They create a plan with that human being 
to put in motion what it will take to achieve that dream. And they're having a high 80 number success rate in helping people find their way forward. This is the kind of place churches can be today. This is what we can do to choose life. This is how we choose life together for one another. We don't have all the answers, but together, we have a lot of ideas and we have a lot of possibilities. And some of them will work, some of them won't work, but we have ideas and we can make a difference. Tim Van Dielen has a friend um, who's been doing rain gardens uh, and, and other ways of sustaining water runoff from parking lots to do good work and protecting creeks in the area in Grand Rapids, Michigan. He's gonna come talk to us sometime soon. But we wanna make a rain garden in the drainage ditch of our parking lot out here this spring. Begin that work this spring. And we have some people that are excited about making that happen. We have potential. We have possibilities. We can choose life. The power of the future lies not in the hands of those who believe in scarcity, but of those who trust God's abundance. Choose life. Every time we gather here, my friends, we choose life. We choose love. This week is that day called Valentine's Day. It's one of those days that we think of romantic love. And that's really fine if you're in a really wonderful romantic relationship at the moment. But if you're not, it can be a really isolating kind of experience. If somebody just lost a spouse, it can be a really sad time. There's all kinds of ways that we think about love, but it's not just romantic love, my friends. It's the way we treat one another. It's the way we live in relationship with one another. It's the way we do church together. Choose life. Choose love. We live with abundance. Amen.
There's a lot of things in the world that we um, are praying for. And so we will do that this morning with the prayers of the people. God of our lives, you invite us to choose life. You encourage us to turn from all that brings despair and death to all that brings fresh love and healthy living. That is an act of repentance, to do a 180. Invite us to turn away from the things that cause us harm, to turn away from worry and despair, to seek the opportunities that you offer for the life that you have created us to embrace. Guide this turning. Help us grow. Move us forward with mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, viruses and illnesses are moving among your people. We know mental health issues are real. So help us heal. Help us to be well. Help us help each other to seek a measure of health and hopefulness. Lord, in your mercy. God of all who mourn, bring comfort and peace and particular encouragement to those who grieve. We especially remember Heidi Gaugert and family on the death of her mom, Gail. Jamie Griffin and family on the death of her grandma and her best friend, Esther. Debbie Sheradden and family on the death of her husband, Dennis. Deb McGowan and family on the death of her mom, Doris. Bring them all what they need each and every day. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope and promise, there's a lot wrong in our world. It fills our news and worries our minds. It fuels misunderstanding, confusion, and conflict. And yet, and yet, there are so many beautiful things that are happening in the world. For all the destruction in Turkey and Syria from the earthquake, rescue teams have searched for life. Around the world, people are contributing to funds that move food and labor to make sure survivors are fed. Volunteers care for strangers. They hug them and hold them and help them through the day. Help us to be these people whenever and wherever we can make a difference. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, we need peace the kind of peace that finds ways to resolve wars and conflicts, the kind of peace that deals with the unrest within our own lives. Help us to be peacemakers. Help us to advocate for justice. Help us to be the change that our neighbors need. Help us to be the catalyst for activating climate solutions. Please be with all who govern on any level and fuel their hearts and minds with authentic compassion and deep, raw truth. Diffuse the tensions and division that exist in the midst of these days, and collectively help us to find a way forward that is compassionate to all of our human kin. Lord, in your mercy. Thanks, help, wow. Those are Anne Lamott's words of prayer for you and for us, as we remember who you are and how you move among us. Thank you for your love, O oh God, that calms us, heals us, secures us, and provides us with hope. Help us as we struggle and as we grow, as we learn and as we love, so that we might always choose life, not just our own, but for all people and for the whole of creation. Wow us with small mercies in the here and now, like turning us to face the way that we need to go. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We are now transitioning to Holy Communion. If you would like to have communion in your seats, we do have uh, mason jars in the narthex of wine or grape juice and wafers. Um, we will do it by intinction where you will be handed a wafer and
dip it in either the wine, which is the tall cup, or the grape juice, which is the shorter one. And we have gluten-free wafers. Just let us know. All right. Let us commune. In the night in which he's betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer as written in our bulletins. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Those of you communing in your seats and online, body of Christ, given for you. Blood of Christ, shed for you. For those coming up, taste and see that the Lord is good.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The good thing about doing announcements is that you get to finish your sermon if you forgot a piece that you wanted to share. And one of the things I want to say first is if you're dealing with divorce in your life, if that's something that plagues you, um, I want you to know that uh, divorce is, is always painful. It's always a death, but death always leads us to resurrection. So if you want to know more about that, talk to me. I have an essay and I'd be glad to send it to you. Um, and the second part is um, downtown St. John's. Anybody know that congregation? Yep. So they were just approved by the city of Madison that they are going to build a building on their site. They're, they're taking down the building they have. They're going to build a sanctuary and a kitchen and gathering space on the first floor. And above that, they're going to build 138 units of housing. And of those 138 units, 110 of them will be affordable housing. And that's how they're going to make it work. And so that's a really exciting project that just got approved. And I wanted to share that too. There's lots of really creative and wonderful things happening within the church. And so we get to be the church together. Thank you for that. Um, as announcements go, do you have anything that you would like to add, Pastor Ann? Easter flowers. Jan is going to hold up the, the note. I know we haven't even started Lent yet, but if you want to get a flower for Easter, we have to order it by next week. And there's all kinds of choices. So you don't have to just get Easter lilies. There's lots of possibilities. So if this is what you want to do, we would love to have your Easter flowers on Easter, which is April 9th. It's a ways out there yet, but it's coming. Spring is coming. You can tell. The birds are chirping. It's all good. All right. Smaller order forms are in the back. Okay. Um, so that's happening. We'll begin um, next weekend. We always kind of jazz it up for worship because then we go into, you know, um, the Ash Wednesday week. We will have traditional Ash Wednesday worship here in the sanctuary on that Wednesday night. There will be dinner before that, so please plan to uh, be part of that. Then on those Wednesday nights following, we will continue to celebrate Lent, but we have a habit on Wednesday night of doing really brief worship, like, you know, 15 or 20 minutes, depending on who's preaching. But even I have been able to make the limit and the cut. But um, we will keep it brief, but we will still be doing Lent. And we'll do some of the traditional Lent kinds of things we like to do, uh, including Holden Vespers. So please uh, feel free to join us for that. We'd love that. There'll be dinner before that every Wednesday night. And dinner is a lot of fun here. Uh, and if you haven't been around since the pandemic was happening, it's, it's just a lively, yummy place to be on Wednesday night. We'd love to have you be a part of that. So those are the things coming up. There'll be more, but we'll, we'll continue to, to advertise that. Then we have Amanda Weigel. She is doing a um, presentation on anxiety uh, on March 5th, Sunday, March 5th, from 10.30 to noon right here. And she will um, be, be talking about what anxiety is, uh, how we cope with it, how we learn to live with it. And so um, if you know anybody who's dealing with anxiety, this is for you. If you're dealing with anxiety, this is for you. That's everybody. That's everybody right now. They are starting to screen for it in older um, adults as they go to see the doctor, screening for anxiety because it's such an epidemic thing post-pandemic. Um, post so um, please uh, advertise that. March 5th, Sunday, 10.30 to noon, right after worship here, uh, we'll be talking about anxiety. Any other announcements? I have one more. We, I know we have two birthdays today. Sandy Hartwig is having a birthday, and Jenny McGee is having a birthday. Anybody else having a birthday today? Amanda's having a birthday, okay. So um, anybody else? How fun is that? I think we need a round of happy birthday. All right, so let's rise and sing together our closing hymn, and you can use your percussion instruments on these. And if you don't have one, your hands, your voices, everything works. Thank you. 
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So go in peace and uh, gather for coffee and, and serve one another in love. Amen. <laughs>